Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Lund University International Podcast. On the show, we aim to give you a taste of international student life at Lund as we speak to our current students, alumni, teachers, and many more special guests. My name is Daniel Gunnarsson, and I'm working as a recruitment manager at Lund University. In today's episode, we will be talking about scholarships and the Arua Scholarship in specific. And with me today, I have two lovely guests, Babs and Nana. So Babs, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. My name is Babs. I work at the International Marketing and Recruitment uh, team here at Lund University. And I'm generally responsible for supporting uh, students with Sub-Saharan African merits to make correct and complete applications for studies at Lund University. Um, Nana, I'm from Ghana and I'm a former student of Lund University. I studied a master's in strategic communication. Wonderful. Welcome, guys. Lovely to have you here on the show today. Thank you. So talking about the Arua Scholarship, what is that? Maybe Babs could give us a little bit more information <laughs> about what the Arua Scholarship is all about. Yes, the name Arua itself, I mean, that this tends to raise a few eyebrows in every place we've mentioned it. It sounds, you know, quite unique as it is. So Arua is just an acronym. It's A-R-U-A, Arua, standing for... African Research University Alliance, and it's a consortium of several research heavy prestigious universities across Africa. And from Lund University's working relationship with Arua, and also in the bid to continue to foster our engagement across the continent, both in terms of research excellence, academia, engaging with talented students and uh, lecturers alike, uh, the management came up with the Arua Scholarship, which in essence is there to help support African students, not necessarily African students, but students with merits from these African countries. And I think there are, as of today, there's about 16 of them and the list continues. I mean, con- the list increases. We don't, we don't necessarily know if the list continues to grow, but like we always tell all students, the best bet is to always check the Arua website to see the most updated list of universities. So that scholarship framework is there to support academically gifted students that have studied or currently studying at this university and have also showed interest in studying at Lund University as well, as the name, Arua Scholarship. Are there any other requirements? Do they need to study a specific program where they can basically study anything? There are no specific requirements. I think the main underlying factor is the students that will benefit from the scholarship need to be um, potential Lund University prospective students. That means it's got to be a student that studied something in any of these Arua universities that will then lead them to be able to study at Lund University. So it must be a student who studied a certain program at the Arua University and already made an application for studies at Lund University preferably already put Lund University as a number one, uh, the number one choice. I think we can go into all that details about application processes later on, but focusing just on the Arua scholarship for the purpose of this session, the main underlying factor is just that the student is an eligible and prospective student of Lund University from an Arua University. Wonderful, thank you. And Nana, you studied here for quite some time. Yes. Did you have a scholarship when you studied here? Um, actually, the Aruba Scholarship is new, but I remember I applied for the Lund Global Scholarship and the SI Scholarship. So, not to brag, but I was awarded 90% of the Lund Global Scholarship and I got the SI Scholarship. So, Whoa. the SI Scholarship wow. automatically cancels the Lund. Yeah. So, I studied with the SI Scholarship. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. But you got <laughs> both, which is absolutely amazing. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's actually amazing. It's yeah. really, really cool. I love it. And you then did like the normal looks application, right? Yes, how, I did. How did you experience that process? Was it a smooth process? Was it complicated? What did you think about it? Well, I think it was easy because I did a lot of research because I read that I have to make Lund my first choice in order to be able to apply for the scholarship. So I made Lund my first choice, chose strategic communication. And somewhere in, I think, early February, I got a notification email 
yeah. that said that I could apply for looks. And all I had to do was write a page demonstrating the passion and the interest I have in Lund University. And also, well, just saying, plastering my academic merits in there. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was rather easy for me. Wonderful. Yeah, the reason why I ask is basically because the scholarship the Arura Scholarship, will be utilizing the similar process as the LUGS because you will be making your application in the LUGS application round, but then you will be, well, selecting additional information. You will be selecting that you want to apply for the Arura Scholarship and there will be additional questions. But I love the fact that you said that it was an easy process at it least. It was very easy. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that, that will help a lot of students, I think, and make them feel more safe and sound. <laughs> <laughs> so when does the application period open, Babs? Uh, the application period will open in the first week of February. And I'm glad you asked that because I know once this comes out, this might increase the, you know, the rush yes. of questions. Like, yeah, now we can, now we want to do this. Okay, like I always tell all my prospective students, please do not get too carried away. When the application period opens, we will be in touch. We already have a relationship with you. We already have your email addresses in our database. We will continue to give you updates on the stepwise process, just like we've been doing. And the first thing to do right now is to focus on getting all your documents sorted out, making sure you have everything you need in order to make a proper application. Because if you mess something up down the line and for some reason your application is not complete or you end up being regarded as a late applicant, there goes your chances of actually being able to apply for scholarship. So the optimal thing for you to do right now is to focus on all the deadlines the you know make sure you get you get everything done before january 15th by way of applying to the necessary programs ranking the programs you're interested in ranking loan university as number one the program at loan university as number one and ensuring that you have all your documents and processing fees paid by february 1st then sometime in the first week of february you will receive an email just like nana mentioned that email will be a prompt telling you that it is time to apply for the scholarship. So we can pretty much say first week of February, you should expect to hear from us. For sure, yes, definitely. So talking about the scholarships, we also mentioned the Swedish Institute Scholarship. And I think it could be good to mention that there are a couple of different scholarships you can apply to when you're applying for studies in Sweden. Absolutely. The Swedish Institute one, though, is it's tied to 41 different nationalities, so to 41 different countries. And as Nana mentioned, you, you got the <laughs> Swedish Institute one, which yeah. is absolutely amazing as well. Um, but we would actually like to say as well, we do recommend students to apply for both if they can, right? Yes. 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 And Nana, what did you think about the fact when you got the Swedish Institute scholarship? Was that a nice, <laughs> nice day? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, knowing that there are so many uh, people competing with you and being selected, I mean, it felt really good. And also, uh, my first question was, do you get both scholarships? And I was told that the Swedish Institute automatically cancels the looks, which I think is a good thing because then somebody else receives it. So... I'll just say the Swedish Institute is, um, it's packed. It's not like they apply for the looks. The looks is rather easy. It's packed. So you must make sure that you are able to like demonstrate who you are. That's the thing when it comes to applying for scholarships. Demonstrate who you are, your passion, your achievement. Don't be afraid. Don't be modest. Just say you did this because you did it. And just, yeah, that's what I'll say. Yeah. So talking about your like experience for making scholarship applications, also being successful, um, what tips would you give to the applicants, and especially for the Aurora Scholarship? Because one of the things that we have included in the Aurora Scholarship is basically that the students, while making an application, they need to upload a link to a motivation video. Okay. So that will make it a little bit, I guess, harder in a way because you would have to, yeah. well, basically express yourself in a new form because usually people write motivation letters, but mm -hmm. these guys will also have to submit the motivation video. So yeah. what would you... Do well, in that case? <laughs> what tips you could said, you give them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you said, it's very challenging, especially if you're someone who doesn't really like videos. But I think that's the thing. If you start early, you can actually have so many takes. Mm. So you just keep writing your motivation letter. And I keep saying, demonstrate your passion because the person reading has to feel what it is that you want, what it is you intend to do with a scholarship. You, you have to show it. So you tell the truth, be authentic self. This is what I intend to do. This is how I think the program will help me. This is how the scholarship is going to help me achieve my goals. 
And if you're able to demonstrate that, I don't think you'll be turned away. So just your passion, be authentic. Yeah, thank you so much. And Bob's, I know that you are kind of a video guru in a way. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would be your top tips for a student making their first video of their life, perhaps? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't call myself a guru just yet, but I mean, just by... <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, yeah, maybe I, I record a lot, a few videos around there. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But I think Nana pretty much sums it up. Being as genuine as possible usually helps. I mean, some people are not comfortable being in front of uh, the camera. Some people thrive well writing. If that's who you are, nothing stops you from writing down a proper script. The video that you're supposed to submit, the, I mean, we're, we're saying one minute video where you send, you had a link to your application. You're not sending us that video. You're uploading the video on any of these open source platforms, YouTube, Vimeo, and the likes of it. It's just a unique link to that video that you will send up to us to be able to assess. So when you do that, you can very much put together a script that you can read from. If you think you will maybe miss something on the way and you want to make sure you get everything in there, put together a script. And if you're a natural, nothing stops you from just taking a deep breath, think about the things you want to cover and just go for it. You don't have to be technical. You don't have to be larger than life about it. We just want to assess who you are and why this should be you. So uh, for me, the most important thing would be how genuine you are. Because I know in the world where we live in today, a lot of students take to AI and all these things. But you know, it will be obvious if you try to cut corners. Just be as sincere, as realistic as possible. Be yourself and, you know, it will be easy. And yeah, nothing stops you from recording 20, 30 different videos and choosing the best one. So uh, the, the, the starting point will be, you know, just be you and let us get to know you. Yeah, I think it's very, very important to just notice as well that we are not looking at the technical aspects of the video. No. We don't care. What we are interested in knowing who you are and what you would like to become, what you would like to achieve mm. with the help of our scholarship. So the technical aspects of the video, we don't care if it looks bad, yeah. as long as you look good. I mean, <laughs> and not, not physically, like what you're saying, that's what's important. We don't care about the other stuff. So if you want to spend... You don't have to spend five hours doing transitioning and <laughs> shooting it like you're shooting a TikTok or Instagram reels with, you know, <laughs> with, 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 you know, word popping up on the screen. And No, you don't need all that. You can literally sit at your dining table or your bed and read a text for one minute telling us what you want to do and how this is supposed to help you in, in your academic pursuit. So spend less time on the technical sides and focus a lot more on letting us get, get to know you. Yeah, the key message, that's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just to add, you should remember it's one minute. So yeah. highlight the most important things. You can actually start saying, I want to get in because of this, that. Then at the last minute you say, maybe I'm Nana. It, you know, just mm. highlight mm. what it is that you want to project. Just do that. Yeah, that sounds great, actually. Uh, and while talking about like the video and the motivation letters and the fact that they have to upload some other information as well, I can just mention that since it is part of the normal looks uh, application, there are certain questions that might scare a few students off, especially from different cultural backgrounds. We ask questions like, what would you like to do in the future? And that could be like, I would like to stay in my home country or I would like to work in the European Union. I would like to work in Sweden. Those are only for statistics, guys, so don't freak out. It's not like we're trying to figure out, like, yeah, this dude is going somewhere that we do not want him or her to go. It's not about that. You can be safe and sound while making your application. It's just for statistics. We need this for getting to know you better, guys, so that's fine. Uh, but also, like, when you have made your application, we need some time to assess these applications. So how are we going to assess the applications, Bob? Do you know how we're going to do that in detail? Well, in, in detail, I mean, I don't know how much we want to go into now, but I think we can very much just summarize that just like we have uh, esteemed colleagues who've been working with the LUGS, that's the Lund University Global Scholarship for several years now. The Arua Scholarship would more or less take the same shape where we will have colleagues at external relations, colleagues at the departments and faculties 
uh, coming together to make an assessment. So we're not, in essence, going to be the judge and jury of you know the application. We have several stakeholders that are involved. We have several other colleagues that will be able to uh, come together and assess things to make a very impartial uh, judgment. Just to, before I finish that, I just wanted to add one last bit. Uh, like we said, it's a one minute video. So it might help if our prospective students try to avoid the, I call them fluffs, like, you know, those things that are not necessary for you to put in the video. I mean, you're applying for scholarship. We already know, okay, that means you indeed require some level of financial support. So you probably don't need to spend 30 seconds telling us about your life history or your circumstances. We do empathize with you, whatever your financial status might be, but we will, drop, we will go from the basis that, yes, this student requires financial assistance. So that's a constant already. So try to avoid indicating that in your video. Try to avoid mentioning anything about your financial status or your financial circumstance because that just takes away the precious seconds that you do not, uh, that, that you do not have. So try, it's important that you put your thoughts in order and not focus too much on why you need to apply or some student might assume that if they talk about, you know, how their personal circumstances, that might buy them some level of empathy. No, it will not. It will just mean uh, you're shooting yourself in the foot, if, if, you, if you will. So just try to avoid that and just go into specifics. It's a very important note, actually, because, I mean, it might sound very harsh if we tell it like it is like, I mean, if you're talking about need and the actual need for a student, but the fact of the matter is that what we're really interested in, in is finding the best students, the students that are really interested in doing uh, these type of research or these type of programs. Uh, we do care about their interests. That's what we, we do. I mean, we do know that students have needs. They need to have scholarships sometimes to come and study. And that's why we have the scholarship. So please, guys, don't spend time on telling us about your specific needs because we just assume that you have a need and that's enough. We don't need more than that, actually. That will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other important pieces of information for the students when making an application? I'll just say uh, it's merits-based. Uh, so I'm just going to say that, yeah, so of course, the, your grades are going to be looked at. But then if you are able to demonstrate that you are a good fit for the program, and you are able to demonstrate that you can actually, this is going to help you to achieve the goals you have for your life and that the scholarship is going to turn things around for you, then I think you have a really good chance of, yeah, getting it. <laughs> yeah, I think that talking about scholarships in general, like the Lund yeah. University Global Scholarship, we did award something like 120 scholarships mm -hmm. for last year, mm -hmm. which was amazing. I mean, obviously we had more students getting the opportunity of getting a scholarship, but then for different reasons, life happens and students might get into other universities or they might change their life plans and they did not show up. Yeah. But there will be a very fair chance of getting a scholarship if you apply for this Arua scholarship as well. Yeah. And we're looking forward to seeing how much interest we can get from these universities. I personally don't know that much about the Arua network because I am working with different markets myself here at Lund University. But... From my understanding, there's quite a few students and they seem to be very, very good. I mean, it's very good universities they're coming from, which I find very interesting as well. And I know that Bavs has been working in these countries. So do you have anything more to tell about these like universities? Why have you focused on these universities? These universities, are, I mean, as Lund University is prestigious, we're top 100 in the world. we we'll continue to remain a top choice for international students. These sort of universities are more or less counterparts, if you will, or yeah. the, 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 the Lund University type universities in these countries, you know, the very household prestigious universities in all these individual countries. Just to name a few, there is University of Ghana. I was going to say that, University you, you know, of Ghana. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, you got to represent <laughs> in Ghana, University of Ghana in Kenya, University of Nairobi, Nigeria, say what? University of, <laughs> I'm Nigerian, so I got to shout them out. <laughs> University of Ibadan, University of Lagos, University of Rwanda. You know, there's a host of, you know, these, you know, prestigious universities from all these countries. Mm -hmm. So students from this sort of universities tend to be perceived as high flyers because, I mean, these are prestigious universities. For you to be studying at one of those, then you really must, you know, 
be academically gifted as 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 it is. So um, I, I, that that would just be the. Yeah. I mean, there was the need for it, and the easiest way, the more efficient way to go about it. It's a pilot project. With I mean, we, we don't know what would happen next year in two years' time. This could expand, or this could still remain as an Arua thing. But for now. We feel it's the best way to go forth, putting one foot ahead. Okay, so there's already a consortium. There's already a group of, you know, research and academically prestigious universities in the continent of Africa. Why not go via that route? Hence that choice. Yeah, I think that was my understanding as well. I mean, these universities are very research heavy, just like us. And I know that quite a few of our master's degree programs here at Lund University, like the project managers, like the actual uh, professors at the programs, they have previously also favored students from research heavy universities and since this i mean alliance were already there yes. it was like a very easy solution to basically start with that because i think that what we're looking at now is the opportunity of having scholarships like this all over the world where there are like more targeted scholarships and this is a very good start i would say and no but it would be fantastic if we could get some students applying from these universities that would be interested in coming to lund I would love that because we've had so many students coming from these countries before, but this is a new opportunity for them to basically be able to come and study with a tailored scholarship for them. Mm. And uh, that would be great, uh, honestly. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I, I could just add a little bit of information as well. Um, there will probably be specific questions, students wondering, oh, yeah, you've talked about Swedish Institute scholarship, you've talked about this and that, we know what we get if we get a Swedish Institute scholarship we know what we get possibly if you get a Lund University Global Scholarship but what do we get if we happen to become a you know a grantee of an Arua scholarship so I think the easy answer to that is just it's like we said it's more or less like the Luke scholarship and that means students have the opportunity to get up to 90% of their tuition fees and the, as mentioned, the selection process is always in conjunction with um, like a steering group that will comprise of colleagues at external relations, colleagues at the faculties and a host of other places. And they sort of make the decision of what that percentage will look like. But students have the opportunity to get up to uh, 90% of tuition fees, which then means all the students then need to worry about is the remaining 10% as well as catering to their subsistence allowance, which they would need for residence permit purposes. Yeah. Talking about the living costs, maybe we should just mention that as well then. So uh, what would be a feasible like living cost budget for a student in, in Sweden? Uh, I think we say about 8,500 Swedish crowns, which would be roughly, I guess, 750 euros in in today's exchange rate, guys, <laughs> that might change. This is at the recording, so just so you know, that might change at the as well. time of recording. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but would you say, Nana, since you've lived here, is that feasible, or could you get by on less as well? Well, it depends on your lifestyle mm. because usually the budget is like nine thousand four hundred and fifty Swedish crowns for students. So, for instance, I lived in a studio in Helsingborg, so it was close to like six thousand, uh, six thousand a month. And my grocery is like thousand for a month, so I was getting eleven thousand from the Swedish Institute. So it's like seven thousand out of the way. So it depends on your lifestyle. If you don't eat out, if you cook, and if you, um, you know, you should strategize when you go out. Yeah. So if you just go out for fika, maybe you can just get a cake or something. So it depends on your lifestyle. You can live on maybe eight thousand, as you said, or nine thousand, depending on how you live. You shop when it's discounted. They have student discounts. So when you do that and you buy things in bulk, you save a lot of money. Yeah. And also, I think we can mention as well, you had a studio apartment. I yes. think that's probably the most expensive way of it living as a most, student. It is. I think the corridor rooms are probably less than half of that in exactly. many cases. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, for two in a in an apartment, each of you pay like 3900 Yeah. Yeah. And when you have um, four or, yeah, it's less. So it depends on you. And there will be a podcast on housing as well, so that students will know more about yes. what type of housing we have available. So, and I mean, I, I, to your question, Daniel, I usually just advise students to always check the migration agency's website because, like you're saying, what we're talking about in terms of living costs now could change next week. Yeah. Like they that could decide to, uh, it's, it's a federal government authority. They don't answer to anyone. So, what, all we can do is to offer suggestions of what we anticipate. Mm-hmm. 
as mm. w- what to expect. So regardless of what your lifestyle is, just like Nana mentioned, there is also a specific minimum that the, re- the this migration agency wants to see in your bank account that they expect of you on a monthly basis for the whole yeah. calendar year. So even if you're a very prudent student, you're very economical, you budget properly, and you most likely will maybe find a way to live on less than 9,500 plus, like, you know, the amount, I don't know the exact figure right now, but if you plan to live on half of that, you should still note that the migration agency will still want to see the full amount in your bank account before your residence permit can be granted. So plan accordingly to have that in place, at least until you get your residence permit. Yeah, yeah. that's a very good and valid uh, <clears throat> yeah, advice, actually. We have a lot of students that are thinking that they could get by on like working and yeah. stuff. But the problem is that yeah, there is a law saying that you need to show the money up front before that's you can right. get a residence permit. So it's not a university thing. It's not no. up to us at all. It is a migration agency in Sweden that is setting these um, uh, key numbers and key figures. So yeah, keep an eye out for the migration mm-hmm. agency website as well. Uh, but you should be fine. Um, so let's say now we have a lot of listeners to this podcast and let's say that they have made their application. What would be the next step then, Bubs? Yes. Yeah, so the next step, once you've... So let's let's think about the chain-like process now. So you've made a correct and complete application. You've submitted all the documents you're supposed to submit and it's February 1st, the application deadline done with. You've received an email from us prompting you to apply for Arua Luke's SI scholarship, and you've done that, the next step will then be the assessment that will be done internally. And the result, the next thing will be the results of the scholarship being announced. And that is generally tailored towards the time when you will actually receive uh, offers for studies. So it's, we, we strive to always make it between 24 to 48 hours yeah, yeah, no, no, not, not, not up to a week, I'm sure. No, no, no. Exactly. I mean, so you're absolutely right. I think the last, I think, ten years, yeah. we have been able to reach all the primary scholarship recipients within hours of their actual results Fantastic. coming out. Yeah, that and that's true. a top tip for you guys as well. <laughs> Please don't send us emails. When will the scholarship results be out? <laughs> exactly. We will inform you. But we get that every single year because they are on their toes. They are so eager to get here. They really want to know. You will get it, and it will take hours for us to send out. That's the main issue. But yes, within 24 hours, they should all know. The next step would then be the assessment done internally, and then in most cases, results and coalitions would already be done such that we're just waiting for, you know, offer of admission to go out and then we'll reach out to the primary uh, grantees before, uh, you know, taking on the next step. So for you as a student, what you should expect is within a few hours to 48 hours of you receiving an offer for studies from Lund University, you will receive a decision based on the scholarship that you've applied for. The most important thing that I want you to have at the back of your mind is, even though you become a grantee of this scholarship, it is not set in stone. We need you to actively accept the offer because there, as always, there will most likely be people on the reserve list and there is a timeline where we'll give you ample timeline. Daniel, I'm not sure if I think it's up to like... Uh, it's usually one week. One and week, then yeah. if they haven't responded, we usually communicate with them as well to make sure that our emails have reached them. Exactly. And, yeah. So you, you have that one week grace period to explore your options. But if you, in, I would imagine if you've applied for the scholarship, you indeed want to take advantage of it. So once you receive an offer, make sure you go ahead and accept the sp- your, your offer for the scholarship as well as your offer for your study place at Lund University. All these things are not customized to you. If you don't accept your offer, it automatically goes to the next student on the wait list. So I'm mentioning this because we've had several students over the years who run to us after like a week after the deadline. Oh, by the way, I, I was out of town or uh, I didn't have access to my inbox so I could not accept. Can I still get my scholarship or can I still get my space to study? I mean, unfortunately, we can't help in that situation because there are thousands of students on the reserve list that are eagerly waiting and begging to uh, be able to receive a spot. So if for some reason you're not able to accept your offer on time, that might just go on to the student on the wait list. So I beckon unto you, please check your emails regularly and 
uh, make sure you accept your offer. So that will be the last phase of the whole process. You accepting your offer and then uh, applying for your residence permit will be the next thing. And then we look forward to seeing you in August. Definitely, mm -hmm. yes. I think that this has been a lovely discussion, guys. Yeah. I like the fact that we have Nana here, who <laughs> has been a scholarship recipient of two different scholarships as well. Yeah. And also, you're also an alumni. Star. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she, a star yeah. she is a star for sure. <laughs> and thank you, Babs, as well. My pleasure. And I would also like to thank all our listeners to listening in to this podcast. And as Babs mentioned, we genuinely looking forward to welcoming you to Lund in the future. So good luck on your applications, guys. And hope to see you in Lund. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lund University International Podcast. If you're interested in learning more about Lund University, you can go to our website, lunduniversity.lu.se. You can also follow us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and X. And you can chat with our current students on Unibody. Don't forget to subscribe, and we look forward to bringing you a new episode very soon. <laughs>